you're 47. What is the likelihood that you personally will go to Mars? 70 percent. We've recently made a number of breakthroughs that, I, that I'm just really fired up about. And when does that happen? In our lifetime? Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about moving there. So it's like, so if it, it, you can get the price per ticket maybe around a couple hundred thousand dollars. This could be an escape hatch for rich people. No. Hmm. Your probability of dying on Mars is much higher than Earth. Really, the app of going to Mars would be like Shackleton's app of going to the Antarctic. It's going to be hard. Uh, there's a good chance of death, going in a little can through deep space. You might land successfully. Once you land successfully, there will be a map. You'll be working nonstop to build the base. Uh, so you're, so you're not, not much time for leisure. And uh, once you get there, even after doing all this, uh, this is a very harsh environment, so there's a good chance you die there. Um, we think you can come back, but we're not sure. Now, does that sound like an escape hatch for rich people? And yet you would unhesitatingly go. You know, there's lots of people like climb mountains. You know why they climb mountains? People die on, on Everest all the time. They like doing it for the challenge. Well, I think first of all, I should say that I do not expect to be involved in all these things. So the, 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 the five things that I thought about at the time in, in college, so quite a long time ago, uh, 25 years ago, um, you know, being, you know, making life multi-planetary, um, accelerating, accelerating the transition to sustainable energy, um, the, the internet, broadly speaking, um, and, and then genetics and AI. I think um, I didn't expect to be involved in, 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 in all of those things. I actually, at the time in college, I, I sort of thought um, helping with electrification of, of, of cars was, was how I would start out, and that's, uh, that's actually what I worked on as an intern was um, advanced uh, ultra capacitors with, to see if, they, if there would be a breakthrough relative to batteries for energy storage in, in cars. And then when I came out to go to Stanford, um, that's what I was going to be doing. My grad studies on is, um, is was working on advanced uh, uh, energy storage uh, technologies for electric cars. And then I put that on hold to start an internet company in, in 95 because um, the, 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 there does seem to be like a time for particular technologies uh, when they're at uh, a steep point in the inflection curve. And, um, and I didn't want to you know, do a PhD at Stanford and then and watch it all happen. Um, and then, and, and I wasn't entirely certain that the technology I'd be working on would actually succeed. Um, like you can get, you can get a, you know, doctorate on many things that ultimately are not, do not have a practical bearing on the world. Um, and I wanted to, you know, just, I, I really was just trying to be useful. That's the optimization. It's like, what, what, are the, what can I do that would actually be useful? Help us try to picture what it would take to build a future that's worth getting excited about. You've often said, the last sure. time you spoke at TED, you said that that was really just a big driver. It's, you know, you talk about lots of other reasons to do the what you're doing, but fundamentally, you want to think about the future and not think that it sucks. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. I think in general, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of discussion of, of like this problem or that problem, and a lot of people are uh, <clears throat> sad about the future and, and that they're uh, pessimistic and and I think uh, <clears throat> this is this is uh, this is not not great I mean we, we really want to wake up in the morning and and look forward to the future we want to be excited about uh, what's gonna happen mm. um, and, um, and and life cannot simply be about uh, sort of solving one miserable problem after another I want to be in, involved in issues that will have a significant effect on the future. Um, I guess I can probably trace that back to when I was uh, a teenager and um, I was trying to figure out what's the meaning of life um, and there didn't seem to be any good answer. Um, so uh, it seemed like, well, then in the absence of having a good answer, then we should try to expand the scope and scale of human consciousness in order to better appreciate the nature of the problem that we're trying to solve and figure out what questions to ask. Uh, just like uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy uh, with, with Douglas Adams, he, you know, he really hit the nail on the head that the really tough part is figuring out what questions to ask. Once you have a properly phrased question, the answer is comparatively easy. So if we're going to do that, then we, we, we obviously want to maximize the likely um, 
lifespan of humanity and expand beyond Earth and you know, just sort of get a better understanding of the universe. So that's, so I, just, I, I thought I'd get involved in things that would do that. If somebody is doing something that is useful to the, the rest of society, I think that's a good thing. Like, it doesn't have to change the world. Like, you know, um, if you're doing something that has high value to, to people, um, and, and frankly, even if it's something, if it's like um, just a little game um, or, you know, the <laughs> some improvement in photo sharing or something, if it, if it, has, if it has a small amount of, of good uh, for a large number of people, um, that's, I mean, I think that's, that's fine. Like, stuff doesn't need to be changed the world just to be good. One thing I really admire about you is you don't just talk about the future of humanity, you actually start companies and do things about it. So what made you so audacious? Well, I don't really think of uh, these things as all that audacious. Uh, they seem like uh, natural things to do. Um, you know, it, um, it's sort of a, more of a long-term optimization rather than a short-term one. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, um, not, not that I think, you know, everyone should be doing these things, but someone needs to do them. Um, so, so, you know, so if I see that, well, somebody's not doing this and maybe I could be helpful, uh, then, then, then I try to do something in that regard. There have been some folks that have spoken out and said, why didn't you use the money that you purchased Twitter with to do something for charity, philanthropy, more good with that money? Well, I do do a lot of things uh, philanthropically, yeah. um, and um, really, uh, th you know, my, th th my companies are intended to uh, do good for the future of humanity with the Tesla trying to accelerate uh, the advent of sustainable transport and, and energy, uh, and SpaceX is um, providing internet to the least served people around the world. The best space um, company in the world. I know. In the world. <laughs> and also what you've done for Ukraine as well during this. Yeah, absolutely. So we're able to help Ukraine with the Starlink terminals um, and uh, give them uh, connectivity in, in uh, particularly some of the hardest hit areas. So, you know, I, I, aspirationally, I am trying to do good for uh, humanity and, and the future of civilization. Where did you get this mentality? Where did your son get this? I, know. I mean, I told him not to take on the world and the universe and he didn't listen. Clearly not listening to, listen to his mom. A man that is so tapped into so much that's going on in the world today, making the time to come to an event like this, the Mecca. Why is it important to be here this evening? I, I wanted him to come. <laughs> yeah. My mom wanted to come, so uh, that I, I brought my mom. That's that's yeah. the reason. Weren't there some people along the way though who told you that ah, that's crazy to start a space company or a new electric car company or a well, solar company? Sure. I mean, there are lots of people that said uh, that the likelihood of failure was extremely high um, and that it was a sure thing to do. Um, and when I started SpaceX, uh, one of my closest friends got a compilation of rocket failures and made me watch the whole thing. <laughs> um, and, uh, and there were lots of people that tried to talk me out of it. Um, and the joke was, you know, how do you, how do you, um, make a small fortune in the rocket business, or you start with a large one. Um, and um, I got told that joke so many times that, um, that I, obviously I knew the punchline, you know, so I'd just tell them the punchline and they would look at me like, is he serious or? <laughs> um, or it's like, or like say, why did you start a rocket company? It's, it, like, um, I was trying to figure out the fastest way to turn a large fortune into a small one. That seemed like a good way to go. Um, but, but the thing is, like, I already thought the probability of failure was, was high and that, and that, you know, with that, the likelihood of success was therefore low. Um, and uh, so this was not new information. I, I, I thought maybe SpaceX had, I don't know, 10 or 20 percent chance of success and Tesla probably similar. Um, I, thought, I thought Solar City had a much higher chance of success. Um, but probably still only, you know, I don't know, 50% or something like that. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, for, for the longest time, I mean, and, and SpaceX and Tesla almost didn't uh, survive. I mean, it came very close to perishing as companies um, in, in, in 2008 and 2009 with the Great Recession. Uh, it was an extremely close call. There, there are a lot of negative things in the world. There's a lot of terrible things that are happening all over the world. 
all the time. Uh, there are lots of problems that need to get solved. There's lots of things that are, yeah, that are miserable and kind of get you down. But that life cannot just be about solving one miserable problem after another. Can't, that can't be the only thing. There need to be, there need to be things that inspire you, that make you glad to, be, to wake up in the morning and be part of humanity. That's why we did this. This guy called Tsiolkovsky, one of the early Russian rocket scientists, the great saying, Earth is the cradle of humanity, but you cannot stay in the cradle forever. It is time to go forth, become a star-faring civilization, be out there among the stars, expand the scope and scale of human consciousness. I, I find that incredibly exciting. Uh, that makes me glad to be alive. I hope you feel the same way.